like being in church. Amen. Amen. Sunday, everybody ought to be in church. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I, I've been doing this for a while, coming to church, and it never gets old. Amen. It, it sh this should never get old, coming to the house of God. Amen. I'm telling you, it, it's new, and it's great every day. Amen. I can remember when I first walked in them doors. Amen. There in Lufkin on South Medford Drive, and the power of God began to move on a Sunday night. Amen. The power of God, I was sitting on the first, second row over there, and it, I mean, the power of God hit me. I fell out talking in tongues. I didn't know all the things that took place. Amen. When I woke up from the floor, I had a blanket on me. Some elder lady put a blanket on me. I, I don't know. I, I thought I was modest. Amen. But I guess that's just what she did. Amen. But I got up and I said, you know what? I got to come back for more of this. Amen. It ain't just a one-time deal. It's not just a one-night stand, amen, but I'm telling you with Jesus, it gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. <laughs> Truly, the old song said, take this whole world, but give me Jesus. And in 2024, amen, you need to be in an atmosphere like that where the presence of God provokes you and gets you say, you know what, I got to go back for more of that. Amen, because God never runs out. You may run out of money, but God never runs out of power. Amen. And so if you have your Bibles, turn to 1 Samuel chapter 16. Amen. I told you Wednesday night a few things. I think you may have thought I was just talking. Amen. But this is part two of Wednesday night. And if you didn't like their music, amen, you ain't going to like this. So you just better hang on. Amen. And, and I just, I is what I is. I'm not trying to be like nobody. Amen. Other than Jesus. And uh, I'm, I feel comfortable in who God's called me to be. And, and I just believe miracles are going to happen in this house today. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And uh, let's just see what the Lord will do. Amen. First Samuel chapter 16 and verse number 6. We'll start with 6. First Samuel 16 and 6. And it came to pass when they were come that he looked at Elab and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Then Jesse called Adinabab and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, Neither hath the Lord chosen this. Then Jesse made Shammah to pass by, and he said, Neither hath the Lord chosen this. And again, Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. And Samuel said unto Jesse, The Lord hath not chosen these. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are here all thy children? And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest. And behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him. For we will not sit down until he come hither. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and with all and of a beautiful countenance and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Verse 13, Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel arose and went to Ramah. Verse 14, and the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. An evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. And Saul's servants said unto him, Behold now, an evil spirit from God troubleth thee. Let our Lord now command thy servants which are before thee to seek out a man who is a cunning player on a harp. And it shall come to pass when the evil spirit from God is upon thee that he shall play with his hand and thou shalt be well. And Saul said unto his servants, Provide me now a man that can play well and bring him to me. Then answered one of the servants and said, Behold, I have seen of the sons of Jesse the Bethlehem knight that is cunning and playing and a mighty valiant man and a man of war and prudent in matters and a comely person. And the Lord is with him. Verse 19. Wherefore Saul sent messengers unto Jesse and said, Send me David thy son which is with the sheep. And Jesse took 
a donkey laden with bread and bottle of wine and a kid and sent them by David his son unto Saul. And David came to Saul and stood before him and he loved him greatly and he became his armor bearer. And Saul sent to Jesse saying, let David, I pray thee, stand before me for he hath found favor in my sight. And it came to pass when the evil spirit from God was upon Saul that David took a harp and played with his hand. So Saul was refreshed and was well, and the evil spirit departed from him. Oh, hallelujah. What a word. I want to preach this moment, uh, this morning, just for a moment. I, I don't preach long, amen. I just try to flow with the Holy Ghost. Amen. But I want to preach to you today, when I'm in trouble, send me a praiser. When I'm in trouble, send me a praiser. When I don't know where to turn to, preacher, send me a praiser. Send me somebody that can get this off of my mind, off of my spirit. Clap your hands and give the Lord praise in this house. Come on, really clap your hands, all you people, and open up your mouth and shout with a voice of triumph. Oh, hallelujah. Praise be unto God. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, our world needs a praiser. Amen. Clap your hands one more time just because it feels good. <laughs> Praise be unto God. You can sit down. This is the last time I'm telling you to sit down. Amen. You ought to praise him while you have a chance. It's a grave matter when you think you're at the end of your rope and there's no more hope. That's why David said when my heart is overwhelmed, he said, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. I believe today is going to be the day you have been looking for, ma'am. And if it's not your day that you've been looking for, you need to open your eyes and you need to start looking for something you haven't been looking for. Come on, somebody. You want to help somebody in 2024? Send them a praiser. You want God's attention? Be a praiser. Some of you need to participate in what God is doing in this season. Come on. It's time for some of you to come out of your pew, and it's time to praise the Lord in this house. Amen. It don't get no better than that. We're going to get a whole lot worse. I want to tell somebody here this morning, when I'm sick, send me a praiser. When I'm discouraged, send me a praiser. When I'm depressed, send me a praiser. When I'm downtrodden in my spirit, send me a praiser. Oh, hallelujah. There are some things that can't be fixed other than having somebody that will praise him with you. Oh, hallelujah. I want to tell somebody here this morning. Oh, hallelujah. If you don't want to do it for yourself, you ought to do it for somebody else this morning. You don't know what they're going through. You don't know the battle that they've been fighting this week. And they don't need a complainer. They don't need a murmurer. Hey, my God, they don't need a politician. They need a praiser. In 2024, when I don't know where to go, David, lead me to the rock. Lead me to the presence of, lead me to the place I can come out of this. Oh, Hallelujah. I heard an interview of a country music singer one time, and it was asked to him, what is the goal at every single concert? And uh, he said, never get them to sit down. He said, if you can get them to stand the whole concert, he said, you know you had a great concert. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. I ask you today. When's the last time you stood up on your feet the whole service while your pastor was preaching saying, I'm standing in agreement, pastor. I need you to keep on preaching, pastor. I'm going to keep on believing, pastor. Come on, this isn't a time to sit down in the mully grubs. It's a time to rise to your feet and encourage one another and say, we may be going through this, but David, we just hang on a little while. We're getting ready to come out of this. Send me a praiser. Send me an encourage. Oh, hallelujah, I tell you, what, if you want victory and if you want to settle some stuff in your life today, you need to praise the Lord. 
Oh, you don't believe me? In Numbers 13, he sent the spies in for 40 days. And when they didn't do what God asked them to do, God gave them a day for a year. So every day they was in, God added a year that they would live in the wilderness. And someone today may say, how important is this day? I'll tell you this. If you do the right thing, it could take a year away or it could add a year to what promise that you've been waiting on. I tell you in the Holy Ghost, there's a praise here on this Sunday morning. You can expedite some things. You feel like it's been delayed. You feel like you've been denied. But God said on this Sunday morning, if you choose to worship me in spite of what you're going through, I can expedite expedite your miracle I, I, can, I, can, I can move some things forward the difference is are you going to praise him on a Sunday come on you want your children saved you want your family saved you need to go ahead and believe God you're moving some things up on this Sunday morning come on we're not sitting there taking it amen like the world may be taking it but the church of the living God you need to encourage yourself how do I do that praise the Lord with somebody your praise can move some things up amen one of the first revivals I was preaching at Greater Love Tabernacle there in Lufkin. And on a Sunday night, I had this tambourine. Hey Amen. I told you I was going to bring it. Y'all thought I was playing. I didn't come to play today. <laughs> I'm going to preach a little while. I'm getting out of here because I'm going home and I'm going to baptize my nine-year-old boy and they only say the name of Jesus. Hey Amen. This isn't a day to mourn. This isn't a day to wear sackcloth. This is the day to put on the garment of praise for your spirit of heaviness. When I'm in trouble, I need somebody that can praise the Lord with me. Oh, Hallelujah. I know some pastors hate this. Amen, but it's because, amen, they, they, there's people that they ain't using it right. That's why. I don't know if he's one of them. He may be. I don't know. He is, yeah. Praise God. Well, this is going home with me. Amen. This is mine. This is my personal one. Amen. There's a story behind this. Amen. I got in church when I was 15, 16 years old. Amen. My grandparents... They were selling watermelons on the side of the road. Hey, man, they said, you can come with us during the day, but if you're going to spend the night with us, hey, man, you got to go to camp meeting with us. I said, okay, what's camp meeting? That's church. I said, okay. Hey, man, I'm a Baptist boy. And so I go to first night of camp meeting, and thank God it wasn't a dead camp meeting. Thank God the Holy Ghost was moving. Thank God we didn't have people sitting there, amen, looking frozen, amen, at what the world was going on. But there was people, amen, that would take off running, people that was worshiping, people that was lifting up hands, and I thought, my God, this is crazy. But you know what? I said, I got to come back for more of this. I come back Tuesday night. I come back Wednesday night. I had more questions than I did answers, Brother Wheeler. But I come back Thursday night, and I come back Friday night. And Friday night was Holy Ghost night. And if you ain't got the Holy Ghost today, today's your day. It's Holy Ghost day for you. Hey, man, that, Sunday, that Friday night, I come down there. Actually, Brother Mangan was preaching in 2002, Holy Ghost. And he said, look at your neighbor on the left and on the right and ask him if they have the Holy Ghost. Well, my granddad's here and a stranger's here. And that man said, do you want to go? I said, not with you, I do. I said, I don't know you, sir. Hey, man, and so my granddad asked me. He said, hey, you want to go down? I'll go down there with you. See, when you come down here, you ain't got to come down here by yourself. There's a brother and sister, amen, that wants to encourage you, to let you know, hey, I'm going to encourage you. I'm going to push you in the right direction, amen, where you can get in the presence of God. Thank God my granddad wasn't backslid that day. Thank God he was living for God. I'm telling you, it does matter who you're yoked up with when you come to church. Oh, hallelujah. There's people, hey man, they don't want to pray. Well, get off of my row if you don't want to praise. You ain't going to hinder me. I'm going to praise God. I need a breakthrough. You don't know what I need today, and you're not going to stop me. But, well, they ain't singing my song. Well, it don't matter what song they sing. You ain't going to praise him anyhow. So get out of the way. I'm going to praise the Lord while I have a chance. Come on, 
somebody. This isn't amen to try to appease you. It's trying to please God. God's looking for the true worshipers in 2024 that know how to worship in spirit and in truth. So I come down there, threw my hands up, did what they told me. Power of God come on me. I had brown penny loafers on. I slipped in them shoes. I shouted up out them shoes. I come back to myself. I thought, what in the world has went on? And my mother told me. She was a little leery about me going down there. And uh, I did. All it takes is one service. Could change the rest of your life. If one mistake, amen, can alter your life, one choice, one touch from God can alter it too. The world says you messed up too much. God said, give me one chance and watch me turn your life right side up. Watch me put things together. The world said it would take years to do. God can do it in one service. So long story short, because I, I, I didn't intend preaching this right here. Amen. But this, this is free. Amen. And so I went home that night, and, and we had to go out to eat afterwards because Pentecostals like to eat. I didn't know that. We went to Denny's that night because that was the only place open. Amen. And that next morning, I didn't have to say nothing to my mother. I walked in the living room. She said, well, what happened? I said, what you mean? She said, I know something happened out there. Well, if you know, why are you asking? I didn't say that. I thought that. <laughs> I said, it's the Holy Ghost. I said, it got on. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I shouldn't have let you go out there. But over 23 years later, can I tell you, amen, somebody who said, I knew you shouldn't have went out there. The God filled her with the same Holy Ghost that I got in 2002. I'm t- when I'm in trouble, send me a praiser. Don't send me somebody to talk me out of my miracle. Send me somebody that can talk me into it. So I was in Bible school 2006, 2010. And my grandmother, she was from the country church. She, she didn't have all this luxury. You think you, in the, you ain't in the country. Amen. Go to Etool. They had hardback pews there. I think they still do. Amen. But I mean, my grandmother, she had cirrhosis of the liver. She had grandma seizures. She was a diabetic. She had health problems. Amen. That stricken her body. And I remember one of the last times, amen, I was talking to her on the phone, Brother Wheeler. She said, son, I've lost some things, but I didn't lose everything. She said, I've never lost my praise. She said, I'm like Job. The Lord give and the Lord taketh away. But blessed be the name of the Lord. And I heard my grandmother on her dying bed, a tambourine in the background begin to play. She said, son, don't you ever lose your praise I come to tell somebody here on this Sunday morning you may have lost some things along life's way but you never need to lose your praise your praise is your greatest weapon Orange First Church somebody needs to pick up an old weapon and say it's been some time but God I'm getting ready to praise you in this house So my grandmother, she didn't leave me a name. She didn't leave me money. She didn't leave me land. She left me a weapon of praise. And this is how I fight my battles. So you can look at me strange if you want to. Amen. But I'm telling you, these are they that overcame. Amen. I've seen God do more miracles with this tambourine than I have. That's nonsense. First revival, I was preaching this. I didn't know it'd work. I'm going to try to convince some people here today. I, God, I didn't know praise would work. I'd have got out there a long time ago. That first service, or, or I was there, I don't know, six weeks. One of them services on that Sunday morning, I remember I walked through that back door there. And there was a lady and her husband sitting on the third last pew back there. She said, Brother Whittemore, I got thyroid cancer. said, I need you to pray for me. I said, okay. I thought, my, can we do it a headache? You know, something small. 
But you, you got to understand, you can't do it anyway. It's God that does it. And so I was back on that third pew. I laid my hands on her gently. I wasn't palming and shaking her to the floor. Amen. I just prayed the prayer of faith. I said, God, you created this body. I said, God, you can dissolve this cancer that's in her body in the name of Jesus. I began to pray. Amen. A lot of the church didn't even know I was praying. Amen. I began, remember that night. Amen. I, I brought this tambourine to church. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. I said, well, I'm going to praise the Lord. How about that? And I started praising God and began to preach. And I said, sis, I said, I prayed for you this morning about that thyroid cancer. I said, you back, back, back there sitting down. I said, my God, I said, we prayed for you this morning. How about you come up here and start praising God like it's already done? Hallelujah. She come up down there. She grabbed this tambourine. She went to shaking on the pie. God hit her. She come down that aisle. She went all the way in the back, threw that tambourine down, went to shouting. Crazy people looking all over. Hey, Amen. Oh, hallelujah. She ran around the church. She come up there. She said, not God, preacher. She said, I don't know what happened. She said, but I'm telling you, I felt virtue. Oh, hallelujah. And there's some people in the natural say, oh, that look crazy. Well, if you get in the spirit, I'm telling you, you'll see things in the spirit that you won't ever see in the natural. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Two weeks later, I left that revival. I was sitting on my couch when we lived in McLeod, Texas. I get a phone call. I didn't know the number. Amen. But I'm an evangelist. I thought, maybe it's a pastor. Let me answer this. Amen. And all of a sudden, it was that woman's husband that called. He said, Brother Whittemore, he said, this is so-and-so. He said, you're the one that prayed for my wife about thyroid cancer. He said, I said, yes, sir. I remember. He said, well, I just want you to know we're leaving Tyler Cancer Center. And not only does she not have cancer, but the doctor said it don't even look like cancer's ever been there. I'm telling somebody in the name of Jesus, when I'm in trouble, send me a praiser. When I'm stricken in my body, send me a praiser. Don't send me a murmurer. Don't send me somebody. A man who's weary, send me somebody who has strength enough to praise the Lord. I preach Wednesday. Don't worry, be happy. I preach today. Don't worry, praise him. Don't bitter, don't be bitter, but praise him. Don't walk away from God, but it's time to walk towards God and begin to praise him with all of your might. That same service, that same service, man and woman, they come down needing a miracle. Amen. She was the first one. I thought, my God, that thing does work. Let's go ahead. Amen. Put it in somebody else's hands. Man and woman come down. They've tried fertility. They've tried doctors. They've tried money. Doctor said, you'll never have child. I said, well, how about we praise the Lord? Amen. Some of you have given up too easy. The doctor said it can't happen. The lawyer said it can't happen. Amen. The devil said it won't happen. How about you pr try to praise God and watch God make it happen? With, with man it can't happen but with God all things are possible that service amen that was the first service I've seen divine miracles amen that man he come down there with his wife his wife got the tambourine I began to pray with her amen and the empire of God fell on her I said sis I said go ahead and praise him that's all I know how to tell you she got that tambourine she went to shake it on and the power of God amen hit her amen she took off running something about that back corner back there amen she threw that thing down again and she was just worshiping God her husband just I said, my God, I said, go back there and worship with her. You don't need nobody to pull you down. You need somebody. Come on, that's it. That's it. Go ahead and worship God. That's it. Go ahead and believe again. That's it. Go ahead and rejoice again. That happened on a Sunday. We didn't have to wait two weeks from then. Amen. I come back on Wednesday. Amen. And before I begin to preach, I walked up to the platform. They said, Brother Whittemore, I want you to know. He said, we went to the doctor yesterday. And the doctor said, I don't know what happened. Amen. But you got a baby that's on the way. Nine weeks in the womb. Amen. You can go to Greater Love Tabernacle now. And not only do they have one child, they have two childs. I'm telling somebody, if you need a miracle this
this morning? Amen. It's in your praise. Send me a praiser. Don't send me somebody with full of unbelief, but send me somebody that's got full of faith. I said, you know what? I've tried a lot of things, but I'm going to try to praise him this morning. Hallelujah. Jesse says, Sin. He sends these seven boys for Samuel to anoint. He went through them. He said, The Lord hadn't chosen these. These ain't the one. He talked about, he said, That one right there, David. One that's attending sheep. The one that was uncommon. The one that not everybody else picks. Amen. But later, David was a man after God's own heart. And in the world that we live in right now, I was at a church for a little while, and it was just like, uh, uh. I mean, always crying, always just, I thought, my, it, it'd be good every once in a while just to praise the Lord. It can't always be not, it can't always be bad. The Bible said, well, we got to be biblical. Okay, I know what the Bible says, weep with them that weep. But in 2024, COVID, amen, show that. And we, we, we didn't have praising parties. Hey, but we had weeping parties. Everybody's quick when, you, when, you, when something bad. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But when you get blessed, oh, hang on now. Why didn't God bless me? Why is he blessing you? The Bible says weep with them that weep. But not only weep with them that weep, it says rejoice with them that rejoice. See, if you can weep with me in my down time, I need you to rejoice with me in my up time. Come on, somebody. Hey, man, I need somebody to encourage. I need somebody to praise the Lord with me. Thank God you was there when I went through my down time. But now that I'm blessed and highly favored, I need you to rejoice with me. Come on, that means God is in the neighborhood. And if God's in the neighborhood, it's just only a matter of time when he comes to bless you. Amen. In this season of this church, I wouldn't sit back and well, well, why ain't God touching me? Why ain't God doing this? How about you get out and start praising God and watch what God does for you? I'm telling you, God doesn't. He's not looking for the complainers. He's not looking for the, the ones that are quiet. He's looking for the ones that will open their mouth and that will encourage a brother and sister say, hey, you may be going through this, but we're going to praise God together. Hey, but it ain't always going to be like this. Rejoice with them that rejoice. God anoints the praiser. The Bible said that the Spirit of the Lord came on David. Saul, who was always got his worship wrong, and the Spirit of the Lord left him. He was more worried about his kingdom than God's. His agenda and not God's. Some of us come to church and we're more worried about our preference. They're not singing what I want them to sing. He's not preaching how I like him to preach. Can I tell you this isn't about you? This isn't about me? This is about God. This is about God who is high and lifted up. I don't care if they sing Amazing Grace or if they sing the old rugged cross. Amen. I'm here to worship God. I'm here to praise God. I'm here to encourage somebody. I said you may be going through a downtime. Amen. But God's about to lift you up. The Bible said as long as there's a praise in the midst of Saul, he was refreshed. Thank God I don't go to a dead church. Because when I've got an evil report, my God, I don't need to leave church and feeling worse than I did when I got here. I need to leave church feeling refreshed. I need to leave church feeling renewed. I need to leave church feeling encouraged. And if you will be a praiser today, this is a place of refreshing. This is a place of salvation. This is a place of opportunity. This is a place of new beginnings. I'm just looking for one. 
He said, send me a praiser. I don't need everybody. I just need somebody. Send me one. Amen. If you're troubled, you need a praiser. If you got an evil spirit on you, you need a praiser. Amen. If you don't know where to turn next, you need a praiser. The servant said, we can fix this with a praiser. And Saul said, send me one. God, I wish everybody in this house would be a praiser because it speaks of unity. But I tell you what, Saul didn't need everybody. Saul needed one guy that knew how to praise. It changed the atmosphere of the whole kingdom. A praiser was stepping in to the throne room and got everybody's attention. That's why the psalmist says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and come into his courts with praise. See, you want to make a difference in the courtroom of God? God's asking for a praiser. That's where God dwells. It doesn't matter what comes my way. I will still praise God. God. You can't let circumstance stop you from praising God. You can't let lies stop you from praising God. You can't let your feelings stop you from praising God. And I'll go ahead and, and just go out here on the extra mile here. Amen. You can't let your age stop you from praising God. You never get to a place in God where you retire or where you're not, you're not old enough to praise God. Yeah, you are, son. The hand of God's on you. Hey, but you're just right to start praising God. We're here. We might as well stay a while. My nine-year-old boy going home and baptizing this evening. Hey, Amen. He don't understand some of this. I remember going to camp meeting. Hey, Amen. Taking him down there. We go down there to worship. I grab his hand. Oh, hallelujah. I said, son, this is how you overcome. This is how you fight your battles. It's worshiping God. It's not back there sitting in the pew feeling sorry for yourself. No, son, get up and praise the Lord. He may not understand it right now, but bless God when he gets old enough. He'll know where to go to. Amen. When he's in trouble, he'll know where to run. When he's. Send me a praiser. Somebody said, Well, uh, you, you baptized, that's great. But aren't you going to tell him about all the trouble he's going to go through? No. He'll find out after a while. Won't you tell him about, you know, people lie on him? No, he'll find out after a while. See, I didn't know about troubles when I got in church. I didn't know people say this and say that. I got baptized. I loved everybody. And I thought everybody loved me. I know everybody don't love me, but hey, that's okay. You know what? I is what I is. I come to tell somebody, just because who you are does not exempt you, amen, from problems. Just because of who you are does not exempt you from hardships. Just because of who you are doesn't mean that you'll never suffer loss or you'll go through a sickness. The Bible says it rains on the just and the unjust alike. Stop questioning God and start responding to God. You hear me on this Sunday morning. What it does mean the Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous but the Lord delivereth them out of them all he'll deliver you if you keep on praising him he'll bring you through if you keep on praising come on if God brought you to it God's got the power to bring you through it I wish I had somebody on this Sunday that said I've been in trouble but send me a praiser send me somebody that can get the presence of God I don't want to offend them. Bless God, they read the sign before they walked in here. I don't want to disappoint them. I was preaching revival not too long ago. Amen. There was a man over 40 years. 
40 years walked away from God but he walked in that church service and it was hot and thank God it was hot he said my God preacher he said this is just like one of the services 40 years ago I said sir I said we may change I said but God remains the same your situation may change but your praise ought to remain the same I'll bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. That's the same praise that was in David ought to be in us. You hear me? You want to help Orange? You want to give them bread that will last forever? Give them peace that's beyond their understanding? Give them joy that strengthens them in the middle of the battle? Give them Jesus. I didn't give you my opinion today. I didn't give you something out of a book I've read. I come to present you Jesus today. You need help. You need Jesus. You need strength. You need Jesus. Come on, Orange. This isn't a time to sit down. This isn't a time... Amen to be pa- passively, but it's a time. Amen. This church, we need some tongue talking. We need some aisle running. We need to give them pew jumping. We need to give them shouting. Amen. Holy Ghost power. Give them the Holy Ghost. They're not looking for the counterfeit. They're looking for the real thing that can change their life. I don't know. You're just being a little extra today. I beg to differ with you. I was in San Jose preaching on a Sunday morning. And uh, they had two services in that church. And, and nobody told me the first service was Sunday school. And I come in there hot. I come in there preaching. Amen. People had coffee and donuts. I thought, what in the world are we doing in here? I brought out my tambourine. I preached message of extravagant praise. They weren't ready for that. And I started preaching. And, and it took me about 20, 25 minutes just to get some of them to start believing what I was preaching. And I turned around and looked. And I had a timer behind me. I thought, was that for me? So I looked at the assistant pastor, a good friend of mine. I said, hey, I said, is that me? Is that timer? He said, it is. I thought, well, let me carry on then. And so I started preaching, and I pulled this tambourine out, and I began to preach. I began to go to this aisle right here. There was a man back there on the back row. And I said, I went up to him, tattoos all on him. I said, sir, I said, the power of God is getting ready to fall on you. I said, as a matter of fact, you've been fighting with some weapons. I said, but God's getting ready to give you a new weapon for you to fight what you've been fighting. I said, step out in the aisle. Tears started coming down his face. What I didn't know is mama was two rows in front of her, in front of him, and that was her backslidden boy used to be in a gang. Just got out of the, out of the, uh, the prison just about a month ago. Been coming to church trying to do right. All of a sudden, I I saw an ex-gang member in the center of the aisle out there. Got this tambourine and began to shake it. The power of God fell on him. He started speaking other tongues. As the Spirit of God gives the utter, I'm telling you, it may be old school, but it still works. It's still the power of the Holy Ghost. And if you want your life to change, amen, you need a praiser in your life. You need somebody that can refresh you. You need somebody who can renew you. So give them Jesus. Silver and gold have I none. We don't have the solution to poverty problem. We got the solution for your eternal soul today. I can't say I can pay your bills, but I can get you to a land where the walls are jasper and the gates are pearl. I can get you to a place where there's a mansion. There'll be no more crying. There'll be no more dying. There'll be no more pain or shame or agony I can give you hope that will last beyond time I can't get you on a high of some drug but there is a Holy Ghost today that if you get it Oh, hallelujah. You can get out in the aisle and you can begin to dance and rejoice and begin to lift up your hands and begin to praise God. 
and the shackles of shame and despair, amen, and, and, and failure will begin to fall off of you. Don't you tell me. I was preaching in a church. Hey, man, and there was a Catholic man. If you're Catholic, God bless you. They're sitting for you, but this is, I'm just telling you what happened. Hey, man, that man, he told his wife, you really believe what they're preaching down there? You really believe all that miracle stuff, that Holy Ghost stuff? Hey, man, I was preaching there at that revival. He was there with her. The power of God hit him in the middle of my preaching. Hey, man, I wasn't preaching good. Thought I was, but nobody else was responding. Had to get a Catholic man to respond. Power of God. God fell on him. He started running down the aisles. Hey, man, he come down there talking in tongues. The whole place went sideways. Can I tell somebody? Hey, man, all it takes is one person to change the directory of a church. All it takes is one praiser to change the atmosphere of a service. I'm telling you here today, it may not mean nothing to you, but it means somebody else's life for you to get out and praise the Lord. I'm preaching today to your spirit. This has to get in your spirit. See, praise enters us into the throne room. Praise got David in Saul's court. Your praise on earth looses something in the heavens and gets God's attention. The Bible said he inhabits the praises of his people. King James Version uses praise 277 times. There are seven Hebrew words that are synonymous to the word praise. Number one is yada, which is praise with the raising of hands and total submission and devotion. Raising your hands to God is praise. Can you raise your hands right now? And raise it unto God. You're not doing it because a preacher's telling you. You're doing it because you're giving it unto God. Come on, when you begin to lift up your hands and praise, shame begins to fall off your mind. Heaviness begins to fall off your spirit. Come on, when you lift up your hands, you're saying, God, I surrender. God, I give it to you. He had a Bahoshata. Number two is Baruch to bow completely, overwhelmed by his majesty, and bow at his feet in submission and honor to the Lord. Amen. Bowing in the presence of the Lord is praise. Oh, hallelujah. Number three is Zamar, playing of an instrument, the ideal of making music. By plucking at the strings with fingers and singing praise unto God. Don't you let nobody tell you you can't have instruments in the church. It glorifies God. I don't pray this because I have talent. I pray it unto the Lord. Come on, you you go on the platform playing the keys or the drums. You're not doing it for a show. You're doing it unto God. You're doing it unto God. It glorifies God. Number four, allow to rave and to boast of the wonders of the Lord through excitement and dance. It's still all right to dance in church. Let me just go ahead and meddle here. We need more dance floors in the church than we do bar stools. I'm still not ashamed to dance before the Lord. That's what David did with all his might. You can look at me if you want to, Michael. Amen. But if you don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. I'm telling you, amen, if you want God to do something in your life, just begin to dance. Just begin to give God praise. He was running. He was leaping and praising the Lord. I'm too dignified. I'm too blessed. 
That's what's wrong. Some churches are too blessed and they forgot, amen, where God brought them from. Orange, don't you ever forget where God brought you from. Don't you ever forget the blessings of God. Don't you ever forget, amen, somebody who prays the Lord with you. This is how you fight your battles. This is how you overcome. Send me a praiser. Don't send me somebody dignified. Hey, but this ain't the country club. This is a church house of the living. Send me a praiser. Number five, Toda, a sacrifice of thanksgiving, praising in advance. Anybody can praise when it's gone. Anybody can praise when they get the good report. Anybody can praise when they got money in their pocket. Amen. But God said on this Sunday morning, some of you need to praise him in advance for what he's getting ready to do. Come on, don't wait till the battle is over. You need to go ahead and praise right now. Don't wait, don't wait, don't wait. Go ahead and step out and praise God. I don't have dementia or Alzheimer's. I, I, I remember. I said Wednesday night before I left here. I said from Wednesday to Sunday. I said when that worry comes on you. I said you don't need to entertain that. I said instead of worrying. How about you start praising the Lord. How many can honestly say they've done that this week. The world wants to. I, God. They're worried about the election. Hey man let me just tell you. One of them's going to win. Pretty deep, wasn't it? They're going to do what they're going to do. And bless God, I'm going to do what I'm going to do. I'm going to praise the Lord. I'm going to worship God. Whether Biden's in there, Trump's in there, Hillary, I don't care who's in there. And I'm going to praise God. Amen. That's what this world needs. Amen. The media world's trying to fill you with doom and worry. Oh, my God. There's another virus. Well, I got Jesus. How about that? I got a praise. How about that? What if it takes you out? Take me out. I'm going to praise God while it takes me out. Send me a praiser. Don't send me somebody. Amen. Amen, who's heavy laden, who's looking down. But look up, look up, look into the hills. Look up for your redemption draweth nigh. I'm not trying to be morbid, but I know I'm wired different. But if I got to go, or, or, or when I go, how I go, I'd prefer... Lord, if you're listening, this is how I prefer. Praising one of the red hot services we've ever had, I've ever had in my life, and I'm sitting down untying my shoe and I just fall over. Some of us are sitting on a pew and we've already died in our spirit. You're here in body, but your spirit is dead. And God said this Sunday morning, I'm sending you this preacher. Amen. To try to praise, trying to resurrect some things inside of you. It's not over yet. You ought to praise the Lord while you have a chance. You ought to praise the Lord while you have an opportunity. I'm telling somebody, you're looking at death. And God said, I got a miracle before that death. If you can step out and praise me and believe me one more time, I got to praise. I got a miracle with your name on it. Number six, to heal, to shine, to make a show, to boast, sing a song of praise. I can't sing. Somebody told me one time, I was leading service years ago in McLeod. And I was, I don't know, I was singing, I was doing something up there. The lady asked me, she said, I didn't know you could sing. Thought in my mind, lady, you the only one ever told me I could sing. Man, I'm going to go record an album or something. 
Whether you think I can sing or not, I'm not singing it for you anyway. Somebody say, you're out of tune. Well, bless God, you ain't even singing, so how about that? The Bible says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Sing a new song. Come on, some of you got a praise on the inside of you. And God said you need to get it out this morning. You got a praise. You need to get it out. Because when you begin to praise God, amen, God begins to dwell in the praises of his people. Number seven, Shabbat. Somebody come beat on this keyboard a little bit. Amen. Shabbat. To praise and to address the Lord with a tone or a shout. Why won't somebody just give God a Shabbat right now? Come on. I know you can clap your hands, but how about you open your mouth and give God a shout. Give God a Shabbat. That's the praise the world needs. They need a praiser. Praise is pleasing every time. Praise is always in order. I remember Brother Ray Lynn Penner. He used to play the keyboard there at First Church. And every once in a while, the power of God hit him. He'd come off that keyboard. He'd go to shouting. Don't you ever get so bound by your instruments that you really forget how to truly praise God. Don't you get so worried about singing your part that you forget the part of praising God. Don't you ever forget about preaching a pretty message and you forget about when God wants to drop his presence and begin to move upon his people. Praise is pleasant. And if it's not, you might need to check your spirit. I heard him. Heard your pastor. It's past Wednesday night. So you better be careful judging people when they praise and, and, and looking down on this. And, oh, they, they just, that's just foolishness. The ones that say that are the ones that ain't never praised the Lord. Because I told you when I first started, amen, it gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. And sis, sometimes the problems gets bigger and bigger. But I'm telling you, you could be coming on back and saying, there's no problem too big that I can't praise my way out of. What would happen on this Sunday morning, if God moved to the degree you was praising. Turn that thing up. What would happen if God moved to the degree that you was praising? trying to work people up I ain't got time for you you can go to Cornerstone on this Sunday morning and you'll find Sister Dunn there she come to church with a walker but what you don't know about Sister Dunn is over two years ago amen her body was afflicted had a heart attack I got she was she, she's like a cat got nine lives and she was on her twelfth life already Doctors wrote her off, called the family. That's it. You got two options. Lay, let her lay here and die or go ahead and take her off and she'll die. Either way, she's dying. 
Some of you this morning, it's bad. But tomorrow, I'm telling you, it could be good. Some of you are saying it's worse today. But tomorrow, one service, one touch from God. Her kids were in that room. Sister Dumb was on that life support, on the ventilator. Doctor said, you got four or five hours, and we're going to have to make a decision. Amen. The kids were in there. The son had the pen in his hand. Amen. He was about to sign the do not resuscitate papers. Amen. But they said, hey, we need to call the church. Let them begin to pray. Let them begin to, amen, petition unto God. And the boy had the pen in his hand and as he was getting ready to write Sister Dunn's eyes come wide open and looked over at a boy. He got that pen threw it down. He began to open up his mouth. He began to shout and give God praise. But then the doctor come in. Doc said, what's going on? Boy said, Doc, it's my mom. She ain't dying. She's living. And the doctor said, don't get your hopes up. And I come to tell somebody here this morning, amen, oh, hallelujah, just because it's getting a little bit better don't mean it's going to get worse. Amen, you need, if it's getting feel a little bit better, amen, God, he got the power to complete it. He looked at the doctor. He said, Doc, he said, if God stirred it, God will complete it. And God raised that lady up two years ago. And she's in the house of the Lord this morning giving God praise because somebody, amen, began to praise God on her behalf. We'll tell you the how and the why. And then, then however you want to do, you'll do it. The Bible said in Psalm 149 and 6, he said, let the high praise of God be in their mouth. Let the high praise. Not a low praise. Not a half-hearted praise. There's a reason the Bible said high praise and not a low praise. There's a reason the Bible said a high praise and not a quiet praise. He said, let the high praise of God. Come on, Orange. There ought to be a high praise let out of your mouth today. You need to open your mouth and release a high praise. Come on, there's something shaking in the atmosphere. There's something shifting in the atmosphere. Miracles are in this house today. Breakthrough is in this house. When you open your mouth and let a high praise come out. Come on, that's it. In the name of Jesus, let a high praise come out of your mouth. it you hear me in the name of Jesus your praise is not about good music I thank God for good music since I told you the first Sunday as I was here you keep on singing I love shouting music but praise is not about music praise is about taking vengeance of the enemy He said, let the high praise of God be in thy mouth and a two-edged sword in thy hand. And then he says, to execute vengeance upon the heathen, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. Anybody in here have the devil messing with you? 
Anybody here have opposition trying to trouble you? You hear me? We don't fight a physical enemy, but we fight a spiritual enemy. And the Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. You got to get a fresh revelation that your praise is a weapon against the enemy. Every time you shout, you don't do it out of emotionalism. You shout, you're pushing back the darkness. It said this is the honor of all saints. Ever since I've been preaching, man, I'm back there sitting down right there. The Holy Ghost has been on you. Amen. There's something, amen, that used to be on you. And God sent me here on this Sunday morning to send a praiser to let you know you may feel like you're by yourself, but you are not by yourself. He sent you here to let you know you're here with praisers. Thy precious faith. God said this day, I'm getting ready to do a new thing in the name of Jesus. That's it. Open your mouth, ma'am, and begin to praise God. Watch heaven has come off your mind. That's it right now. In the name of Jesus. That's it. Somebody praise him. Somebody push back the darkness. Somebody push back the enemy right now with your praise. In the name of Jesus. That's it. Go ahead, ma'am. In the name of Jesus. That's it. Go ahead. Jesus, in the name of Jesus, that's it right now, begin to praise God, begin to praise God, that's it, begin to praise God, that's it, go ahead, step out now, step out now, step out now, praise Him, step out now, praise Him, step out now, praise Him, that's it right now, begin to praise Him, that's it, praise Him right now, He had a whole shot, He had a whole shot, that devil is alive, He had a whole shot, let it go right now, sis, Jesus, somebody praise him. Jesus. That's it. Somebody praise the Lord with her right now. Heaven has come off your mind. Shackles be loose in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. by the hand mama take your mama by the hand young lady that's in the power of God in the name of Jesus that's why you're still here sis because your mama's a praiser come on that's him begin to praise God he had a whole shot somebody that's it right now you want your kids saved you want to step out of the aisle and praise God in this house praise him like that preacher but we just wish you would praise him in some way I saw a vision now, I'm, I'm not I don't have visions and dreams and see devils and ain't all the time I'm, I'm not that I just that's not me but I had a vision on the way up here this morning that everybody in this house was lost 
and praise and worship. I see trouble like a cloud here, there, and there. And it's not the will of God for you to be troubled your whole life. It's not the will of God for you to be tormented your whole life. It's not the will of God. Well, this is just my lot. My mama was this, my dad. I don't care who your mom and daddy was. Hey, Amen. I'm telling you here on this Sunday morning, God said it may didn't start with you, but it can end with you. In the name of Jesus, he has a breakthrough on the top of your head to the soles of your feet. In the name of somebody lift up your hands right now and say, I'm not wrestling with this again. Amen. I may be in trouble, but I'm going to praise God and run that evil spirit out of here. Run that oppression off of it. Run that depression out of me in the name of Jesus. He out of the whole sight. You hear me? Not praising him like that is not an excuse to sit in your pew and just enjoy the presence of God because of everybody else's worship. This is the honor of all the saints to give God the praise. God's calling the season, the not so season, the ones that I ain't got a clue what this preacher's talking about. The Bible says, I ain't going to get into all of it. It says, let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. If you're breathing, he's talking to you. If you're breathing, he's talking to you. Well, I don't run the aisles. Just do something. I told you Wednesday night about the man that come out had stage four cancer and his wife, she, his wife come out, she grabbed the tambourine out of his hand and she began to holler. She had a sciatic nerve in her back and a bulge, or a sciatic nerve in her neck and a bulging disc in her back. She was healed. That man, three weeks later, he went to M.D. Anderson. Amen. And they said, sir, said you had a scar of, of, of cancer. But that scar, I'm telling you, it's, it's going to disappear in just a matter of days. Amen. He went back there at Brother Lewis's church. I talked to Brother Lewis a little bit after that. And the man went back to M.D. Anderson and the scar was gone. Gone. I'm telling somebody when I'm in trouble, send me a praiser. Send somebody that can encourage me. Send somebody that can help lift me up out of where I'm at. David was but a youth and he fought Goliath. And a chapter later, Saul said, Send me a man. Tell somebody here on this Sunday morning, you're not a real man unless you know how to praise him. We teach our kids to play sports. We teach our girls to shop, to sew, and all that. How about you teach them when I'm overwhelmed? We go to the house of God and we praise God. Send me a praiser. Celebrity, I need a praiser. 